nebulizers versus various other handheld devices. Is there a distinction? Do, do, do patients do better with one, better with the other? So the problem with nebulizers, and many patients like nebulizers, they're very simple to use. You don't go, have to go through the hand uh, uh, dexterity issues. Until literally a couple of months ago, there was no nebulized llama available. Right. And I think all of us agree that at this point in time, Maybe. llamas are the mainstay of therapy, generally combined, but, gen but certainly the mainstay of therapy. The problem even now that we have a nebulized llama is as you've heard, COPD management is more than one thing. We don't still know whether you can mix that llama with a lava. We don't know whether we can mix the llama and the lava and the, and, the, and the steroid in the same nebulizer. And until we've defined those issues, nebulizer therapy for COPD will still not be uh, the primary mode of therapy because we can't deliver the, the, the group of medicines we want. So it's limited for patients who have <laughs> reasons, mentally, physically, they are the ones who are being primarily getting nebulized. It also occurs to me it's harder to get on an airplane, carry these things around, plug them in where you're going. No? Yes? Well, we can take oxygen on the airplane, yeah. the POC, <coughs> the portable oxygen concentrator. That was a, a big effort led by the, you know, the pulmonary community a few years back. So, yes, you can, you don't use them too much. Now, the, the ones that you can push into, your, the small ones, as uh, the, the guys were saying, have not been approved yet till now. We have a llama with a eFlow, which is a, uh, uh, a low volume uh, type of uh, device. Does it make a difference in terms of patient adherence, uh, a, a nebulizer versus another delivery system? Do patients like one versus another? Well, I think a lot of patients will tell you they really like a nebulizer. They want a nebulizer. But if they're using one of the older nebulizers, that's 10 to 15 minutes per Absolutely. drug. Right. Suppose yep. they have three different drugs. Yep. I mean, that's 30 minutes to 60 minutes yeah. to take your medicine. And with you said, can you take them with you? Well, maybe you can on the airplane, but how about for rescue therapy? If you need a quick reliever, it's not so easy at the grocery store to pull out a nebulizer and use it. So many people are going to need to have both at an MDI, because that's what most of the rescue are short acting are. And if they use a nebulizer, fine at home. But I think that it also takes still some effort to put the medication exactly. into the nebulizer. So someone that's got cognitive impairment is going to need support whether they need a nebulizer or another device. Do the insurance companies like nebulizers or do they like the other devices? Uh, Jim commented yeah, nebulizers that before. Nebulizers are really because that's uh, Medicare. Yeah. And under Part B and D, they're paid for by Medicare and the drugs are. So we call that at times uh, Medicare, Medicare Advair, for example, and that would be a long-acting uh, uh, LABA like a uh, formoterol, our formoterol, um, and plus budesonide, which is compounded, uh, or you could use the pediatric 0.25. So we do a lot of that. Uh, we didn't have the LAMA until Byron yeah. just mentioned. We're going to have two of those coming. Yeah. Uh, one will be in a new nebulizer, one of the ultra-efficient ones, but whether how that will work out, we don't know. So that, that's the main reason is economic, uh, that I use those uh, nebulized drugs. Now the severe is all the things Barbara mentioned with a caregiver at times, a cognitive impairment. The other thing is for the nebulizer, all you have to do is tidal volume breathing to right. get a dry powder. As I mentioned, you have to have a really big peak inspiratory flow rate and to, to use the uh, uh, um, MDI with spacer takes training. So, and the respimat is, uh, as you, you, once you figure out how to do it, it's very easy and it's very a great system, highly, yeah. highly desired by the patient. Right. Do we have data as to patient outcomes, nebulizers versus other handheld it, devices? The meta-analysis is 2005 and 2007, and they're all the same. That was the basis of that initial report from the American College of Chest Physicians, uh, uh, Peter. But uh, I, again, you individualize the therapies we've been hearing all the way through in their own environment. And I, some people will clearly 
do well with it, plus the cost factor. I, you know, I think that's absolutely true. I, you know, my only issue with the nebulizer, first of all, everybody is an individual and you need to define for the individual patient. But the problem to date is that we still don't know about mixing these things together and that leads to Barbara's, you know, two that's hours right. of nebulizer use a day, which is not practical. You know, once we have newer agents that, and data showing that you can not mm. only mix them safely, but that they're effective together safely, uh, that's that will change some of these things, but we don't, so I don't, you make I'm not aware. one cocktail, one therapy burst, and then you're done. Right. Sure, sort of, like, sort, of, sort of like the coffee pot system, right? Yes. You, you know, you wake up in the morning, you say, this is the day that I want the combination, and you put your combination right. in. But unless Jim knows more no, than no, me No, no, I, I say, I had, it's just funny, I was, when I was in India, I asked them why they invited me, and it turns out I, I think I was involved in the development of the seven nebulized therapies that are out there for COPD. Uh, going way back, I'm old enough to have been on the original epitropium. But Byron is exactly right. A lot of companies try to get by the patent rights uh, by altering the, uh, the, uh, the formulation just a twitch uh, for drugs like albuterol and then for motorol. And exactly as Byron says, the osmolality changes, the pH changes, the tonality changes, and you might have an ineffective product or harmful product. So it's not... It's a serious issue, and, and there is no research. Exactly as you point out, it's very, uh, we attempted, because of what Barbara said, it takes, what, uh, 30 more than minutes or something, you've taken three drugs, you're tempted to throw them all in a, a soup and then give it, but you don't know you what you're know. given. So, Peter, your original question is, uh, do we have data so one is better than another? The answer is no. no. You cannot compare. These are apples and oranges. Even though you read those meta-analysis, who are the people who get nebulized, who is mentally impaired, who is incapable? You're not going to improve their exercise capacity or the quality of life because you have no means to measure. So I think what we need to do is we need to go back to identify how oh, this patient will benefit nebulized therapy. This patient is more active, more ambulatory. We can get many of the other devices that we have today. Well, just You're a good. quick warning to watch with a, a couple of the new nebulizers. They are only indicated for one drug. Right. Yeah. And you have to be very careful because then not only would you have to spend 30 minutes, you may have to have two or three nebulizers, Which and comes that's back, not practical. I was asking that's, about that's, that that that's not practical. Yeah, sorry. No, exactly. but there, there exactly. are various right. nebulizers, right. Right? right? There's the ultrasonic, there's the compressor, and something on the a mesh, mesh nebulizer. Yeah. So not only do you have to deal with that, but you gotta pick the right nebulizer. Right. And now you're telling me that some drugs are incompatible with some of the nebulizers. Right. Yes. Oh, that's just great. Yeah, well, and I think it's the reason that primary care frequently says, Gee, pulmonologist, would you like to help us now? Because we don't know what's going on. This is so important. You really, to have, you know, the keep it simple uh, commentary, you'd like to have, you know, one type of dry powder inhaler for everything that cuts down teaching time. However, uh, the, there's now will be one new, uh, uh, the, the glycopyronium will come with an e-flow. It feels like cystic fibrosis, though. Each new inhaled antibiotic and uh, different other drugs uh, uh, that have been developed all come with their own delivery system. Becomes very, very expensive and extremely uh, uh, difficult to... to it. But the, the thing that's interesting, the field is changing rapidly. The number of antibiotics, I know we just had two fail in our, uh, the COPD Foundation's non-CF bronchiectasis, is two cip cipros. Um, that uh, that didn't uh, didn't get approved, but uh, there's just a revolution. I know Antonio has talked greatly about inhaled antibiotics in the ICU with uh, ventilator-associated pneumonia. So the field is going to be very very widened by antibiotics in particular and other types of inhaled therapies for the field of COPD, and they'll all have their own devices.